So we are the supernatural children of a supernatural God. And we do supernatural things. All right, lift up your Bibles. Let's make our confession. Remember the Bible says in Proverbs, death and life is in the power of the tongue. Amen. So as we, as we release these words tonight, we believe God that uh, life is flowing. Amen. So this is my Bible. I am who it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I am a believer and not a doubter. I'm a doer of God's word, not a hearer only. And my life is the better after having heard the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Tonight I will hear the word of God, and it will produce in my life faith, faith, faith. My faith is growing exceedingly, and my faith worketh by my love. All right, turn in your Bibles to chapter 8 of Romans. We're doing a verse-by-verse -verse exposition, making our way through Romans. We've been in Romans now about, what, two months? Maybe three. Amen? Amen. But we have come to... We have come to a pivotal chapter that we don't have to rush. This chapter is the key to Romans. Amen? So we want to make sure we understand. In all that getting, get what? In all that getting, get a understanding. Amen? Wisdom is the principal thing, but in all that getting, Proverbs tell us to, to get an understanding. So we want to, get, we want to understand how this thing works, how it works. I'm going to go down two roads today or tonight. Two thoughts I want to leave with you. The Lord was dealing with me about two things. One has to do with parenting. Say parenting. The Bible says, put, up, put Romans up. The Bible says, Jesus said you must be born what? Again. You must be born what? Born again. Now, the question I'm going to ask you, was that a real birth? Was it a real birth? I see my, my granddaughter taking my little goddaughter, great-granddaughter back. That's a chubby little baby, boy, I tell you. I don't know what she's feeding that little thing. Whew. No, really, really, I'm going to ask you, have we really been born again? Some of y'all ain't sure. No, the Bible says you must be born what? Yes. Was it a real birth? Yes. Absolutely. It was more real than your physical birth. Mm -hmm. Did you become a child of God? Yes. Is more real than your physical mm -hmm. birth and physically becoming a child of a, a physical child. Mm -hmm. Right? See, religion makes God the worst parent that ever lived. How many of you got children in here? You got any children? Are they your, I mean, are they your children? Can they cease being your children? Absolutely not. Have they always did everything you wanted them to do? Come on, I'm talking to you. Say, I am a child of God. Now, you've got to really believe that. God doesn't give parenthood and take it away every time you mess up. Or else he's not good as a, as a human parent. I got six children. I love them to life, not to death. I love them to life, and they have not merely always acted the way that I wanted them to. But it never, so never, never, never a time that I even the thought of disowning them never crossed my mind. So how can we think that God would have disown us? You telling me that we are better parents than God is? Talk to me here. No. And we're going to look at it because he said, 
He says, I am persuaded that there is nothing to nothing. nothing. And he goes through this long dialogue. We probably won't hear it today or tonight, but we'll get there. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Amen? Amen. I, did, I made some poor choices in life. What about you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, my mom and daddy never, never said, because of that choice, I don't want you to be my child again. My children made some poor choices, but guess what? I love my mother just as much as ever when they came out of the womb because they were born, they were mine. So I've been born again, I born again. and I belong, to God. I belong to God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a child of God. How many children of God we got in here? Come on. God don't want you to be afraid. Oh, oh, oh I, can't, I, I forgot to pray this morning. Oh, he, I'm not his child no longer. I forgot to read my Bible. I'm telling you, man, religion is terrible. It makes God into this cranky, ill-tempered being up in heaven that if you step out of place on you, zap. Here you go. He might, he might cause me to have a car rake. You know, he might give me cancer. Look at him and say, not my father. The Bible says every good thing. And every perfect thing comes from God. Jesus said, if you being evil know how to give good things to your children, how much more? Look at the message, how much more? How much more will your heavenly father give you good things? Say, my heavenly father is good. And he gives me good things. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Lift your hands and receive that. I'm going to dispel all of this religious garbage being taught, taught you. You got a total line. You got a total line. Praise God, I don't have to total line because Jesus told it for me. Amen. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Well, let's take a look at it. I'm just going to comment. I don't know how far I'm going to get tonight. We'll get as far as we get. Amen? Amen. Verse number one. There is now, there is therefore now, so now, now. no condemnation. No Look at the Bible, said no condemnation. No condemnation to them that are in who? Christ Jesus. Say, I am in Christ Jesus. There is no condemnation. None, zero, nada to those that are in Christ. Yeah. Are you in Christ? Yeah. Lift your hand says, I'm in him. In order for there to be a condemnation to you, God has to condemn Christ. He has to condemn Jesus because we're in him. Say amen. amen. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the what? Say, so, so I, so I walk after the, after, the after the spirit. That is who we are. We love righteousness. Say amen. amen. Are we love righteousness? Say amen. amen. There's no kind of, for the law, say the law. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me what? Free. From the law what? Sin and death. Say law. law. Let's talk about what law is. Law is a governing principle. This here is not talking about the Ten Commandments. He's talking about the governing principles that governs creation, that governs the natural world. You have the law of gravity, right? You can't see gravity. How many of you know it's real? Right. You don't believe so? Just get on a building, step off there, and hit it. You'll find out. It's real. The law of the electricity, all kinds of law that are out there. But, there, but, but here's, here's the situation. Everybody say the law. The law of the law, the Ten Commandments. Now, we're talking about the Ten Commandments. God gave this to me. He says that we were caterpillars. Right? Y'all know what a caterpillar is? And the law demanded that we could fly, that we fly. How I many you know a caterpillar cannot fly? No matter how hard it tries, it can crawl up a tree. Y'all ever seen caterpillars? You ever seen them? They crawl up the tree, they crawl up things, and he jump. He's still going to hit the ground. Ain't that right? Because there's a, there's a law that keeps him on the ground. The law of sin and death. The law demanded out of us what we could not. Say could not. We could not do it. We could not fly. Say, but, but 
There's another law. The law of the, of the spirit of life in Christ. And when that caterpillar, oh, hallelujah. When that caterpillar accepts Christ, and the caterpillars in here who accepted Christ, look at somebody say, you ain't one no more. Come on, hallelujah, you ain't one no more. When we accepted Christ, there was a desire put in us to climb up a tree, a climb up a branch, climb up something. And when we got up there, there was this desire to start spinning a cocoon. And it's amazing. It's an amazing miracle of, 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 of nature that a caterpillar can turn into a butterfly. Are y'all getting this tonight? God put in us, say it's in me. It's in me to become a butterfly. Even though I might have had that caterpillar nature, crawling on the ground, eating leaves. But I have in me now the nature of a butterfly. Say amen. amen. And I climbed up that, and the Spirit of God took me and climbed up that, that, that little branch, whatever, and weaved that cocoon around me. Say this, I was in, I was in the, cocoon, the cocoon, just like, just like I'm, in I'm in Christ. And metamorphosis took place while I was in there. An incredible miracle. I mean, you think about it. A caterpillar. And then all of a sudden, after a little while, grace. Somebody said grace. grace. Grace turned me into a butterfly. And when I opened that cocoon, guess what? Boom. My wings. You ever seen that on nature, nature show? See how their wings begin to dry out? And he began to fly. That same butterfly, he, he, was, he was a caterpillar. If any man be in who? Christ. He's a butterfly. If any woman be in who? Christ. She's a butterfly. Say, so I'm a butterfly for the Lord. For the Lord. Can't go back to the worm. Can't go back to crawling anymore. Yeah. Don't eat leaves anymore. You know what butterflies eat? Nectar. They don't eat. You've never seen a butterfly chewing on a leaf. Come on, say amen. No, now I got nectar. Say, I got the nectar. I got the nectar of the word of God. That's what keeps me going. And I can go to heights that a caterpillar can never clam to. Say hallelujah. That's who we are, saints. We've been changed. Said literally. We literally been changed. Because we have went through transformation. He said, for what the law could not do, said the law could not do. This is talking about the law of Moses, what it could not do. In that it was weak through the what? The problem was not with the law. The problem was not, the problem was that we couldn't keep the law. Couldn't keep the law. I challenged anybody in here. I said, I said, recite the Ten Commandments. Anybody in here? Anybody know them? Some of them. Anybody? No, Rochelle knows them. I think Rochelle knows them. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt did thou shalt thou doubt. You know what I'm saying? Right. I remember when I was a little boy, and they was arguing over that over the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day, you're not supposed to do. Y'all remember that back there? See, I came from the country. Like, Man, you ain't supposed to black the hair on the Sabbath day. Not supposed to do this. Now watch this is on the Sabbath day. All this stuff. And about one thing that got done on the Sabbath day was the animals had to get fed. fed. Right. And I was the one who did, had to do the feeding, Millie. I said, why, why, come, why come I got to go feed, you know? <laughs> well, I, I had to keep my little mouth shut. I thought about it, though. Come on, say amen. No. The law was weak through the flesh. It's like trying to give people vision, trying to give a blind man sight through shining a flashlight in his eyes. I mean, you know that the flashlight can't give you vision. That's what the law was. There wasn't nothing wrong with the law. It was us that was me. I was weak. The flesh was weak. The flesh could not keep it. And then, you know, there was people who thought that they was keeping it. 
The Pharisees thought that he was keeping it. Oh, yeah, we keep the law. He said, okay, well, let's talk about it. He said, if, a man, if, if you see a woman and lust after her, you already committed adultery in your heart. Man. He said, if you're angry with your brother, you're a murderer. How many of y'all done flunked the test? I done flunked. I flunked on the first one. Right? He said, if any man, if you call your brother fool, you're a danger of hellfire. Said thoughts, thoughts words, words, and deeds. And deeds. The law that required that you keep him perfectly. Thoughts, words, and deeds. Who, are, who is brave enough in here for me to I put a, a, a helmet projector on your, on, your head, on your head right now? and Let, let me look inside it. You, do you want me to project what's in your mind? I ain't seen nobody hand going up. <laughs> Perfectly. Perfect. The law demands perfection and we were imperfect. Say amen. amen. But Jesus. Everybody say about Jesus. God sending his own son in the likeness. Say in the likeness. In the likeness of sinful flesh. He, he came to do royal what me and you could not do. Now, in the likeness, say in the likeness. In the li now, he was not, his flesh was not sinful. Our flesh is sinful from the beginning. Because we inherit the nature of Adam. Okay? And so we, we were sinful from the very beginning. But Christ's nature was sinless. Now, why is that important? Because if... You can't pay for my sin if you got sin yourself. How are you going to pay for my sin? You get up there, get ready to pay for my sin. They're going to say, well, look at here. Here go your sin. But who's going to pay for that? So it had to be, he had to be sinless. But he still had to be human. Because if he was not human, he can't relate to what we go through. The Bible says he was tempted in all points, all points, all points like we are yet without sin. And I don't have to get into all the, the ways we're tempted. Everybody know about that, right? I, ain't gotta, I don't have to go any deeper than that, right? But we all been tempted, and he was tempted in everything that we was tempted in. He says, and then, then the Hebrews said, we have not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He know what it is. T.D. Jakes, pre he preached a sermon that says, uh, uh, God, you know everything, but one thing you don't know. And God said, what is that? You don't know what it is to be a man. You don't know what it is to be a human. And the name of his sermon was the question that God couldn't answer. God thought about it. Mm, yeah, that's right. I don't know what it is to be a human. And he became one. The word became what? Flesh. Became flesh. Now think about it. If it had been me, man, I'd have came down here on me a starship or, you know, like a doing, 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 all the strobe lights going, dun, dun, here I am, the son of God. Dun, dun. <laughs> Come on, how many of y'all have been like that? Ain't that right? I'd have just, just appeared up in the, up in the in sky and everybody seen me coming there. But he didn't come like that, did he? He came as a little baby, born in a stable. Y'all know what a stable is? I know y'all city people. Anybody in here? That's where they keep all the animals, and the animals in their poop, and the animals in their stink. And the Son of God came in a stable, wrapped in a swaddling clothes. There ain't no way to come. Is you the Son of God? Come on. But that's how he came. Amen? And he took our infirmities. Amen? Amen. He knows what it is. Say, he knows what it is. Amen. You, know, people, you don't know. You don't know what it is. You don't. God knows. Like another famous man of God said, if he wasn't human, he can't help me. Say amen. amen. But he was. Thank God he was. Amen? A perfect person, but he was human. He can relate. He knew what it is to be rejected. He knew what it is to be talked about. 
He know what it is to be ostracized. Come on, say amen. amen. He, know, he know about all of it. Say, said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And he said, I'll never cast you aside. I don't know about your God, but my God said he's going to be with me to the, to the end. Amen. Amen. amen? He said, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the what? Flesh. Let's talk about flesh. Say flesh. flesh. I have to go over this again. What is the flesh? Because this thing, this thing, here's what the, the flesh is. You're unregenerated. Say unregenerated. Soul and body. Soul and body. Now let's just think about that. Say this. I am a spirit. I have a soul. I live inside of a body. So what happened at the new birth was my spirit got born again. My spirit was recreated. The real me. Say the real me. The real me on the inside here. My spirit got born again. But my soul didn't, and my body didn't. Now, I have to keep going over this because, listen, and you know how people say, I looked at my feet, my feet look new, I looked at my hand, my hand did too. I remember hearing all that kind of testimony. I mean, how many of you know you still got the same feet side? Exactly. How many of you know if you're bald-headed, you're still bald-headed? Yeah. Come on, say amen. Yeah. If you a certain height, you, you didn't, come on, you're the same height. So your body did not. And and that obvious that your body didn't? My spirit, said my spirit. He took out the the old Leroy and put in the new one. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. He took out the old operating system and gave me a new one. But the data was still in there from the old one. My soul was, was trained in a certain way. My body was trained in a certain way. And now that now my body, that used, the hand that used to slap people, not bless people. Come on, say amen. <laughs> Thank you for that one clap off and back there. The mouth who used to curse people, now bless people. So I've been changed. So now you got a battle going on on the inside of you because you got the old data but a new operating system. And that system is saying, I love God. Let's read the Bible. And the flesh is saying, I don't want to read the Bible. I want to watch this show. And, the, and your spirit says, let's pray. And the flesh says, I don't want to pray. I'm sleepy. Let's go to sleep. Isn't it amazing that how quick you can go to sleep when you pray? I'm trying to help y'all out of here. Isn't it amazing how you can read any other thing except the Bible? You can read all the periodicals. You can read all the magazines. You can read all kind of stuff. But when it comes to the scripture, <laughs> look at myself. What's, What's going on? It's your flesh, baby. It's warring against your spirit. Your flesh don't like the Bible. Your flesh don't like to sing and praise God. Your flesh definitely don't like to pray. You know how I know? Come here on Friday. <laughs> it doesn't want to pray. Somebody offend you? Flesh says, we're going to get them back. Spirit says, you know we're supposed to bless those who persecute us. It's a fight. fight. It's a fight going on. <laughs> Amen. You got it? Hallelujah. Say my flesh. My flesh. My soul and my body. There's certain things. You could, I'll talk to you later. There's certain things that, that your body is trained to do. Right? And your soul is trained to do. Right? We've been trained in disobedience. From childhood, from babyhood. How many of you, you had, anybody here that had a baby? A child, you, you don't have to teach that baby to be rebellious, do you? You have to teach them to be obedient. And it's, it's amazing that the word that they learn before any other word is no. 
No, no, me right now. No, no. Right? Why? Because of the flesh. Say, I am saved. I am being saved. And I shall be saved. So what about this body? This body is death doomed because we came from Adam. It's going back to the dust from where it comes. But, say but, but. we're going to receive a brand new body. Say amen. amen. Thank God for the brand new body. How many, how many of this body right now is groaning and aching? Uh, right? Uh, come on, amen. We're going to receive a grand. Let's, let's, let's see what the scripture says. Amen. Let's go a little farther. He said that the righteousness, said that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the spirit, I mean after the flesh, but after the spirit. Say in us. It's very important that you read, that you see what it exactly said. It didn't say by us. Says in me, say in me. Amen. Philippians says, He that started a good work where? In, in you shall perform it yes. to the day of Jesus Christ. It's not by us because we can't do it in our own power. But He's working where? In us. In us. There's old song, go something on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Something's on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. The word is on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Oh, what a change in my life. So, all you got to do, say, all I have to do is feed on the word. Daily. How many of y'all ate today? I mean, physical food. How many ate physical food? How many of y'all ate at least twice today? How many of y'all ate like three times today? How many of y'all going to eat when you get home? Amen. Right? Right? And you know something? You remember when you might have been little and said, Oh, I want to grow. I want to get tall. You, you mark yourself on the, on, on the wall or something. Mm, all you got to do is eat. You eat, you're going to grow. It says pre program. You're going to grow. If you stay in that word, you feed your spirit like you feed your body, you will grow. It will change you. The word, said the word. The word changes us. Well, what's my part? To feed, to eat. Now, my job is to feed you, I can't make you eat. Right? I can't make you eat. I can put the food on the table, but I can't make you eat. And God won't make you eat. He will not make you eat it. So I have to do that myself. You have to do that yourself. Okay, let's keep going. He said, for they that are after the flesh, after the flesh, do mind the things of the what? But they that are after the spirit, the things of the what? So it's a contest between the flesh and the spirit. The flesh don't like what the spirit like, and the spirit don't like what the flesh like. The spirit loves the things of God. The flesh, now watch. The flesh can sit for three hours and watch 22 men run, run up and down the field with a, a, a bag of air called a football, and they can yell and scream and holler. Ain't that right? I'm just getting on the men right now. I don't know about your women. Three hours, and we'll set out in the cold. And yeah, yeah. And those same men, when you get them in church and tell them to raise their hand, <laughs> but they're out there like, da 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 Three hours. Women can go chopping, looking in, doing, you know, looking in the stores for three hours. And you're like, come, get what you're going to get. What are we here for? Yeah? I'm just looking. <laughs> but come into the house of God. How long are you going to be up there? 
How many songs they going to sing? How, how long it going to take them to take the offering? The flesh does not like the things of God. Say amen. amen. Watch this. Keep going. For to be carnally what? Minded. To be carnally what? Minded. To be carnally what? Minded. Is what? Death. Is death. Well, apostle, what is, what is, what is carnal minded? That is another translation is to be sense ruled. To be ruled by your senses is death. Said to be ruled by my senses. What I see, what I hear, what I smell, what I taste, and what I touch. If I'm governed by those, it's death. But if I'm governed by my spirit, it is what? Life and peace. What is the spirit governed by? The word. There are two kinds of pilots when it comes to flying the plane. There's a sight pilot and an instrument pilot. How many of you ever read, rode on an airplane? Right? You had a chance to look in the cockpit? You ever looked in the cockpit? There's, there are so many instruments in there. The altimeter and this thing and that thing, whatever. You ever wonder how they know where they're going in a cloud bank? I'm looking outside the window like, I don't see nothing. <laughs> like, how do they know where they're going? Everybody say radar. 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 They're looking at the instruments. I had a friend of mine who was a sight pilot. And the only problem with being a sight pilot, you're looking out the cockpit windshield. And it's good as long as there's a clear day. But when you run into a cloud, clouds, you're in some trouble. Because you, don't, you can't tell by your senses whether you're going up or down. And a lot of people, a lot of pilots have died because they thought they was going down when they actually was going up. Well, how, what, what's the instrument panel for us? Lift up your instrument panel. So this is my instrument panel right here. When I can't discern it with my senses, I look to the word. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is with me whether I feel it or not. Amen. Now your senses will tell you he ain't. But his word says, I'm with you how long? Always. I would never what? Leave you, not what? Forsake you. And because I won't leave you and forsake you, you can boldly say, the Lord is my what? Helper. I will not fear what shall man do unto me. Amen? Amen? When I don't feel like it, Philippians 4.13 says, my God shall do what? I look in my refrigerator and I don't see anything, but he said, Amen. my knees are supplied. Say, my knees are supplied. I may feel weak, but Philippians 4.19 tells me that I can do how many things? I can do how many things? All things through Christ who what? To strengthen me. 13 is that, 19 is supply. Right? But what I'm saying is, you look to the instrument panel. You can't look, you can't trust your senses. You can't trust how you feel. So many people are emotionally related to this world. And you can't trust your emotions. Because you can feel good in the morning and sad at, at the evening. Ain't that right? Your emotions change. Come on, talk to me here. Amen. So you can't gauge your reality by how you're feeling. Let me give you an example. We got any married people in here? Yeah. Lift your hands, you married. How many have felt like you weren't married? You see my wife over there? She got both hands and her feet up. Everybody said, but, but. the paper says. Okay. When you go for the judge, you say, Your Honor, it, 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 what, it, what you in there, what you for them? Well, Your Honor, I, I, I don't feel like I'm married. 
and the, and the judge is going to say, sir, you see, you see, I got right here, I got here on my, right here on my, on my bench, your marriage license. And it says, you are married. Don't care how you feel. <laughs> Y'all going right. <laughs> Look at somebody say, it's a legal thing. It's a legal thing. And that has, that's how it is in the kingdom. I am legally a child of God. Would I feel like it or not? Come on, say amen. How many of you have been to that place where you, you've been to that time where you didn't feel saved? I don't know what you were looking for. What was you looking for to verify that you were saved? Ooh, you looking for that? I said, shut up, I'm going to Looking for that? No, I'm trying to help you. If I, when I don't feel like I'm saved, I go to the Word. I go to the instrument panel. John, uh, Romans 10, 9, 10, 9 and 10. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth, who? Jesus said, Lord, believe in thy heart that God's raised from the dead. Thou shalt be what? Saved. So I go there and say, I did this. Devil, devil, do you see this? Devil, can you read? Read, devil. I am saved. What about when I miss it? Anybody here ever missed it? Come on, let's be real in here. God can't help you. I'll go to 1 John, 1 John 1 and 9. If thou shalt confess thy sin, what? He is faithful and just to do what? Forgive and cleanse you for how much unrighteousness? Oh. Amen. So when I get up from there, I don't, I don't get up from there like, oh, man, you are so stupid. Oh, that was you. you know, no. Straighten yourself up. Look at me and say, I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. Hallelujah. That's the kind of God we serve. The word, not how I feel. Here's what the Lord told me one time. He said, it doesn't matter for the brothers, calisthenics. It doesn't matter whether you're crying or laughing when you do a push-up. Does it? Because the push-up has the same effect regardless. So we can't be, you can't navigate by your emotions. Because your emotions changes. And Spirit of God said this to me. I, I never thought there was a day when I wouldn't enjoy food. Man, I like to eat. Come on, talk to me. But when they gave me that chemo, really, it took the taste away. I never thought that day would happen. But it did. And I remember we was in Cleveland. Went to the fish market. Man, that fish market was loaded. Had every kind of fish there was in there. Me, we said, we said crazy, didn't we, uh, son? We like, but I want that, I want that, I want that, I want that, I want that. But all of that fried fish, Tiffany fried it golden brown, delicious, and I couldn't taste his sister, none of it. Everything tasted like cardboard. So you can't trust your sense of taste. You can't trust your sense of smell. Y'all seen that commercial about the guy sitting up in his house, nose blind? You never seen that? Hang around scent long enough, you get nose blind. Ain't that right? So I can't, I, can't, I can't trust those things. Say amen. But if I want life, say if I want life and I want peace, I have to be spiritually minded. And that pilot, when he's flying, ladies and gentlemen, we have some turbulence up ahead. But, you know, he's going to be bumping here for a little bit. We're going to ask all the, you know, the flight attendants to leave, take the plate, blah, blah, blah. And you are, blah, 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 blah. And you bugging eyed. Right? And he flies through. Why can, he, why can that man say that? Because he trusts his instruments. Look at somebody and say, are you trusting your instruments? Are you trusting the word? Are you trusting the word? No matter what, 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 what all around, how it looks all around you, are you trusting the word? The prophet. I told you, I just got to flow. The prophet is standing on the, 
on, on the uh, top of a wall, and all around him is thousands and thousands of enemy soldiers coming to kill him, the prophet Elijah. Elisha. And his protege is freaking out. My father, the army, the army of Syria, the army of Syria. My man is cool, man. My man is cool, uh, Royal. He just calm as can be. And he looks at his young protege and he says, there be more for us than against us. One thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand, forty thousand, fifty thousand, one, two. <laughs> this math, this math ain't adding up. There be more for us. I, I, I see thousands and thousands of enemy soldiers got us around it. There be more for us than be against us. So there more for me. Than against me. me. Say, God in me, me is a majority. majority. Y'all believe that? Yes. And then the, the prophet said, Open the young man's eyes. Mm-hmm. And his eyes, his spiritual eyes. We sung that song tonight, right? Open the eyes of my heart. He opened his eyes and he could see angels. Yeah. Tens and thousands of angels all around hallelujah. those enemy soldiers. Somebody shout hallelujah here. Hallelujah. Look at somebody say, God ain't changed. God ain't changed. He's still the same. He's still the same. There's more for you. So you're on your job, and they start saying, oh, and you say, everybody against me on this job. There's more for you than against you. Amen. You got to believe it. I don't care what you see with your natural eyes. You got to believe it. Are you, are you listening to me? You have to become spiritually, say spiritually, spiritually. minded. See from a spiritual perception, yeah. not a natural one. Yeah. And it would give you, give you peace. Say peace. peace. Well, what is peace, apostle? Peace is mental stability. Say mental stability yeah. that overcomes adversities in life mental you when you know something you can have peace you have to know it though right say you was coming home and as you got ready to open the door of your window i'm at the door of your house or your apartment you hear a lion roar on the other side and you would be afraid and fearful to open the door until you remember something you left the television on and it's on Animal Planet. <laughs> Would you be afraid then? Why? Because you know something. Look at somebody and say, do you know something? Do, who do you know? Who do you know? Ask them, who do you know? And the more you know, the Bible says grace and peace is multiplied to you through the knowledge of something. You have to know this book to walk in the peace of God. Say amen. Amen. Verse number seven. For the carnal mind, say the carnal mind is enmity against God. That word enmity means hostile. It's hostile. It's hostile against God. For it is not what? Subject to the what? Law of God neither can be. You can't make it. Obey, the, obey God. That, that carnal mind. Keep on going. A little, little farther. So they that are in the what? Flesh. Cannot do what? Please they that are in the flesh. You can't please God in your flesh. You can only please God through your spirit. Say amen. amen. But ye are not in the what? Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's make this sense. Say, I am not in the flesh, but in the spirit. It's so the spirit of God dwells in you. Yeah. Where is he? Where is he? Great is he that is where? In me. 
in you. Say he's in me. The Spirit of God is in us. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is what? Every child of God. Say every child of God have the Spirit in him. You have the Spirit of God in you. Every born again child of God has the Spirit in it. We all have it. Say we all have it. Now, some don't know they have it. But those of you who are watching me by social media and those who are here tonight, if you're born again, you got the Spirit of God in you. Go to the next verse. And if Christ be where? The body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit, and that Spirit there should be small case. My Spirit, say my Spirit is life because of righteousness, my right standing with God. Yeah. Tell me right standing with God. Right Man, you got to get this. You are in right standing. If you are born again child of God, you're in right standing with God. How many of y'all going to heaven? How many of y'all live perfectly today? See, all them hands went down? To Jiren back there, he, he lived perfectly. You lived perfectly back there. <laughs> How many of you are still going to heaven? Yeah. You know why? Because it's not based on your performance. Somebody say hallelujah for that. It's based on Christ's performance. Paul put it this way. I am crucified. Say crucified. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, say nevertheless. I live, but the life that I now live, I live by the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So it is Christ stepping in me. How many of y'all like sci-fi movies? I like sci-fi movies. Hey, Louis, back there, you like them too, man? I'd be looking for me a good sci-fi movie. You ever notice that when the aliens come, they get into people? Right? They get into people, and then the people go, hmm. You notice that? There's a person in you, but he's not an alien. It's the Spirit of God. Come on, say amen. amen. Oh, hallelujah. Lift your hand right now. Say, Lord, thank you for the Spirit of God who lives in me. That's who's in you, the greater one. And you need to converse with him. I converse with him all the time. It's a relationship. It's a relationship. You got to get to know him. Now, when you first get born again, you don't know him. You just got introduced to him. And so you say things like, something told me. Something told me to stop at that intersection. You heard inside stop. Right? And, you, and because you, you said something told you, but as you grow, say, as I grow, as I grow. you begin to say, the Holy Spirit told me. Yeah. When I got born again, you know, I, I got I to give my testimony this, son, this Saturday at a men's breakfast thing. But one of the first things, when I first heard the voice of God, I was walking, I was in, I was in Big M, and I was getting ready to get a 40. So I'm born again. Come on, I'm born again, right? But I still, in my soul, still had those ha habits in my soul. And my soul was those habits, and my body was like, can we have some slits? <laughs> don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about in here. How many of y'all body talk to you? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so holy. I, I don't think. Now, can I have another piece of potato pie? <laughs> can I eat another chicken wing? Nobody! Uh, uh, you tell your body this, uh, body, we going on a fast. No, we ain't. <laughs> I just, I know I hit somebody's body out there. We're going to the body like, I ain't going on no fast. You can go on a fast. I ain't going on no fast. <laughs> and you try to put me on a fast, I'm going to give you the biggest headache you ever had. You will have a headache like you ain't never had. And when you go, you ever notice when you're on a fast, you used to smell Kentucky Fried Chicken three miles away. <laughs> People frying chicken, people doing, well, I smell this, I smell that. <laughs> when you're on a fast, you go, you, you go and check in the refrigerator, make, stuff, make sure stuff is in there. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> I don't know about your body, but that's how my body when I go. I said, buddy, get down, buddy. You are going to go on a fast. You don't shut up on make you fast two days. Mm. Well. Anybody body side mind? Paul said, I bring my body what? Under. I make it do, because it don't want to do. Your body says, I want to sleep a little longer. How many bodies say that? Oh, man, this bed feels so good. Bam, bam, bam. Tickling, bam. Get up, get up. No, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. You tell the body, you're getting up. Come on. My spirit. Say, my spirit is the boss. My spirit is the boss. My spirit is the boss. And my spirit tells tell the rest of me, listen, soul. Get in line. Say my will, my emotions, my intellect, my imagination, and my affection. That's what, that makes up your soul. I said, will. Jesus had to fight with his soul. Did you know that? He was in that garden. He said, Lord, if it be what? Possible. Let this cup pass away from me. But then he grabbed the hold of his soul. He said, nevertheless, not my what? But that will be what? Right. How many of y'all have to do the same thing Jesus did? Yeah. You think about it. Here's Jesus up on the cross, man. This is the dude that created the, created the whole universe. He created them little creatures down there talking about, if you be the son of God, then come down from the cross and, we, and we'll believe in you. He said, ah, yeah, I'm going to show you I'm the son of God. <laughs> come down there. <laughs> he could have vaporized everybody, ain't he? Can you manage your anger? You might be justifiably anger. But the Bible said be angry and do what? Sin. See, y'all know all the scriptures. <laughs> I don't even have to teach you the scriptures. You know the scriptures. So you control. Say control. control. Say I'm in control. I'm in control. You control the anger. You control those emotions. You control your intellect. That's the intellect thinks it's smart. You know the intellect think think it's smarter than God. I had a friend of mine say, God told me to do something, and I didn't understand why he told me. You don't need to understand. Say amen. amen. Look at somebody say, You ain't gotta figure out everything God tells you. See, people say, well, you know, I, I got to understand Christianity to become a Christian. No, you don't. You don't understand that car you get in. Until you're standing out there in front of the car with your keys. Hey, what, what are you in your car? I got to figure out how the gas gets to the motor and the combustion of that. It triggers the transmission and, and, and all that. How that work before I drive it? Well, it stay right there then. I, I got to figure out how this big plan with all these people and the luggage and everything get up in the air before I get on it. You don't think about it, do you? You don't even know how, to, how your lights get lit up. I flip a switch and the lights came on. You know about electricity? Unless you're an electrician, you don't. I mean, you don't stand there, you'll stand there opening the door to the house and like, I ain't going to go in here until I understand how this light switch get me, get me light. Look at somebody say, there's a lot of things, a lot of things. You, don't you don't understand. The Bible says, lean not to your what? Own understanding. But in all, the, how many of that ways? All, all that ways acknowledge the Lord. In all that ways acknowledge the Lord and he'll do what? Direct your path. Direct your path. So I have to get my soul, soul under. Let's deal with another thing with your soul. Your affections. To my affection. That's your priority. What are your priorities in life? What are the most important things in life for you? Everybody has them. Amen? And it's how you prioritize things in life will determine what you get from God. I once knew a man, I once worked with a worker who paid $700 for a pool stick. 
You go, mm, mm. Yeah, you might be mm, mm, but you spending your money on something. Come on, say amen. amen. That's not your thing. But show me, show me your spending habits, and I'll show you where your, your priorities at. Amen? Where your treasure is. So where my treasure is, that's where my heart's going to be. Now, people quote it back. They say, where your heart is, that where your treasure No, no. Wherever I put my money, come on, say, wherever I put my money, that's where my heart is. Wherever you put your money, that's where your heart is. And if you want to move your heart, oh, thank you, Sonny, back there, daughter. Listen, I say, if you want to move your heart, move your money. You move your, you move your money, you're going to move your heart. So when I, when, I, when I look at the Bible, the Bible says, seek ye what? Seek ye what? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And how do I, how do, I do it? Somebody say, well, how do I seek first apostle the kingdom of God? Move your money. Move your money. I don't know how much football tickets cost. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how much I, I don't do that stuff now, but move your money. You move your money, you move your heart. See, if I move my money, I move my heart. Yeah. And how do I know? How do I know I move? How, how, can, I, how can I know? Give a significant offering. And it'll be an offering that you ain't never, you won't forget 10 years from now. I remember when I gave, come on. When you do that, your heart is moved. When you do that, so when I do that, now you can claim 2 Corinthians 9. He gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. And multiplied to what? The seed sown. Are y'all getting this? All right, come on. Get a couple more and let you guys go. So I'm free in the Lord. God has put in us. We, we could not. We were caterpillars trying to fly. And we could not because it is not the nature of a caterpillar to fly. But watch this. It's not the nature of a butterfly to crawl. Amen. Any butterflies in here? Come on. Hallelujah. It's not my nature to crawl. I'm, 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 I fly. Fly, little butterfly, fly. And think about it. If you saw, you walking along, you know, going through the park or something, and you saw a caterpillar crawling, you wouldn't think too much of it, would you? You know, they call a caterpillar. But if you saw a butterfly down there, you'd say, what that butterfly doing? That, but, don't it know it got wings? Look at your brother and sister. Don't you know you got wings? What you doing crawling? Fly, little butterfly, fly. Amen. Let me end it with this. <laughs> there was an a eagle, say eagle. An eagle, he came up, he was raised up with chickens. He didn't know he was an eagle, Gail. So he was scratching. <laughs> like chicken scratch, pecking like chicken pecks, because he thought he was a chicken. And one day, so one day, a great bald eagle landed in the yard where he was at. And he said to him, he said, why are you with these chickens? He said, because I'm a chicken. He said, he said, you're not a chicken. He said, you see those wings you got? He says, you see how short their wings is? You see how long your wings is? Seven feet long? He says, your wings are made to soar over storms. The eagle don't run away from storms. The eagle soar into storms and use the thermos to rise above it. So I rise above, I rise above every storm in life. Every storm in life. 
He said, you see those talents on your feet. He says those talents were designed to grab something and to hold on to it. And so the Bible says, having done all, do what? Stand. Having done what? All. Stand. Be strong in the Lord and in the what? Power of his might. He says, your feet, he says, your talents was not designed to scratch the dirt, but it was designed to catch prey in the air and on the ground. And then he said to him, so you see those eyes of yours? He said, you have some of the sharpest vision there is. He says, you can see for miles. You can see the storm coming. He says, so eyes were not designed for you to be looking down at the dirt but to look up at heaven. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say I have eyes that see beyond the natural. And he talked to that, he talked to that little eagle in that barnyard and that eagle shook himself and said, I am not a chicken any longer. I am not controlled by circumstances any longer. I'm not tossed to and fro and running run into the barnyard when the storm come. Come on, say amen. amen. And I'm not, I'm not, I, I, I walk, I walk by, I'm not walking by sight, but I'm walking by what? Faith. Say, I'm an eagle. I'm an eagle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, every eagle stand up right now. If your eagle stand up. Glory to God. We'll make it through this chapter when we make it through it. There's so much in there. Say, I am who the Bible says I am. I have what the Bible says I have. And I can do what the Bible says I can do. I came to believe. I came to receive. I came to change. The devil, come on, the devil cannot stop me from believing from receiving and from changing in Jesus' name. Now all the eagles say hallelujah here. Oh, lift your hand and give him some praise. Give him some praise. Hallelujah. Free. You are free in Christ Jesus. You are made to soar in life, not to grovel in the dirt. But you have to claim your identity. You have to claim the promises. And remember, it's not by sight that we, are, that we, we go through life. Look at somebody say, keep your eyes, keep your eyes on, the on the instrument panel. Amen. And lift your hands. Let me bless you. The blessing of the Lord be upon you. May the Lord God bless you, keep you, make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you, lift up his countenance upon you, and give you peace. For the Lord God is your sun and your shield. He gives you grace and glory and no good thing. Say no good thing. No good thing will he withhold from you as you walk uprightly before him. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you till we meet again. Let all God's children say amen. amen. And amen. God bless you. I bless you week. Have an awesome week. <laughs>